Now, when we move from discovery scanning into vulnerability scanning, we're not just looking for what computers are out there, but we're looking specifically for what we can take advantage of and what vulnerabilities we can exploit so that we can break into a system. We still need to be aware that there are different types of scanning that we can do, because even though we're now to the point where we're looking for actual vulnerabilities, uh, we still might want to be stealthy, especially if we're trying to avoid detection. So if we're going to use tools like Nmap, we need to be aware that you know it'll do things like send a reset packet instead of an ACK packet when we're doing some uh, TCP-based scanning. We looked at this in uh, info gathering section. The actual thought process isn't different, but it's important that you are conscious of how you're going about scanning a network when you're doing vulnerability scanning, just like when we were doing discovery scanning. So discovery scanning, you know, we might just look at a ping sweep or we might look at a computer's ARP table. If we look at the ARP table, we're going to just see what computers the computer computer already knows about on the network, and we don't even have to reach out at all. We can just look for what computers it's been talking to. And basically, a discovery scan is just what's there. And that discovery scan could actually be a stealth scan as well. The reason they're separate here is because all discovery scans aren't necessarily stealthy, uh, but you can add a layer of stealth to it using tools like Nmap that uh, will try to hide its progress or hide its scanning on the network. And then once we know what's there and we can target our attacks or we're not afraid of being noisy anymore, that's where we can do a full scan. And a full scan is not just going to show us what's there, but it's also going to scan for ports and scan for vulnerabilities on its particular software packages and things like that. Now we can use Nmap for full scans and get a lot of information. We've done that, like get banner grabs and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but there are a handful of other, actually more than a handful, there's like a truckload of other tools out there that are going to specifically help us find vulnerabilities. Now, I just want to show you two. Uh, OpenVAS is an open source program that will help us look for vulnerabilities on particular computers. Nessus is a commercial application. It does have some free aspects to it. Uh, it's a really popular one. It's, it's very easy to use. I just want to show you what sorts of interfaces you're going to look at while you're doing vulnerability scans. In fact, I want to show you Nessus in particular because it has an incredibly nice plugin to do like plug and play compliance scanning. The thing is, this is not a free package. So if you are looking for particularly open source packages to do your scanning, that's fine. But Nessus, uh, it's pretty sweet. I just want to show you the possibilities of what's out there. And compliance scans, again, you get a checklist and you go through the, the list to make sure, you know, like, okay, this isn't vulnerable. This is up to date. This is up to date. And the other thing about compliance scanning, I wanted to give it its own slide so that we could focus on is that compliance scanning also makes you look from multiple angles. Meaning, are you scanning from the inside of the network to the computer? Or are you trying to break into a firewall to see what you can uh, access from the outside? And it matters because a lot of compliance scans like PCI DSS require that you scan from both directions, right? You have to scan internally and also you have to scan from the outside. Now I'm in Kali Linux here and I just want to show you these tools so that we can see the types of scans that we're going to do. The first thing I'll look at is OpenVAS. Now OpenVAS has this front end called Greenbone Security Assistant and I'll be honest, I kind of love the branding. It looks pretty cool. I have noticed that OpenVAS can be a little finicky when it comes to running, especially for some reason for me on Kali Linux. Uh, updating stuff. It just, it's not as stable as I would like, but this is what it looks like. And you go through, it's web-based. So it actually runs as a service on the computer. And this is just a front end to it. And you can do things like a uh, run scan, start a new scan task, and it will go through, it'll even do a wizard for you to help you determine what it is you want to scan. And it'll just do vulnerability scans on the network. So that's open VAS or Greenbone security assistant. You'll often see it referred to as, as well, because this is the GUI front end that you install. So you can access the underlying scanner. Now, the other one I want to show you is Nessus. And I actually went through and I started a scan. I uh, actually completed. Good. So I ran this scan because I want to show you some of the details that it gives you. So I just ran a scan on our local network here that we're going to be playing with throughout this course. And you'll notice it found some vulnerabilities. It even rated them as far as how severe they are. So let's look at this computer here. Oh my goodness. 192.168.1.152 is not a secure server. Look at all of these critical exploits it found. In fact, 
gain a shell remotely. Uh, there's a back door here. Another option here, you can gain the shell remotely. It looks like they actually set the default password for VN a VNC server as password. Oh, that is not a good idea. That is something that we would easily have the company mitigate by changing that password. Uh, but this is the type of thing that you can expect from Nessus. And the reason I wanted to show you Nessus is because remember I mentioned those compliance scans? If we go into my scans and we were to start a new scan, these are the types of scans that they give us. We can look for malware. Uh, we can look for all sorts of stuff. If you scroll down, do, 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 all these scans, unfortunately, these require a cost. If you actually want to do their their all-in-one packaged up PCI network scan, but it is nice to be able to have all of the features already rolled in. It's going to scan the checklist of items, if you will, for a PCI DSS scan from the inside. You'll have to run this from the outside as well because that's part of what PCI DSS requires. But you'll notice there's all these different types of scans where it will check for compliancy. It's just a really, really nice feature and well worth the upgrade if this is what you're doing uh, for your career. So anyway, I wanted to show you that some of these have them built right in, but other tools like OpenVAS are there. They're just maybe not as robust or not as easy to use. It's not just a simple checklist. You're going to have to make the checklist and run the individual scans yourself. So vulnerability scanning is basically just the next type of scan on our list. It's going to narrow down those vulnerabilities and those vectors that we can use to attack. But even when we're checking for vulnerabilities, we need to be careful. Is this something that we want to do stealthily or are we okay with lots of noise on the network? I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.